caller just before 8.30 this morning was talking about how government, government, a lot of people just don't have any any faith in it any longer because they feel that, and I had an email just before I went on air today that echoed this too as well, public servants now treat their public office as private property. In other words, we serve them. And, and the only people, the Republican Party, even when Rush Limbaugh breaks with the party and starts criticizing it for being more interested in its donor base than in its constituency, the Republican Party has a serious problem. And and I heard Limbaugh mentioning that a couple of weeks ago. I have seen it uh, in a column over the weekend. Uh, saw it yesterday morning, in fact, from talk show host Laura Ingram. She was saying the same thing. Now, she's not just a talk show host. She's a lawyer. She was a clerk at the U.S. Supreme Court. She worked briefly in the Reagan administration, and then she was a reporter at CBS News for a time. So this is a woman with a very worldly background. She is saying the same thing, that the GOP has sold its soul, but at least the leadership has sold its soul. And I, I found it fascinating because as I was reading this, I started to think about something that the columnist and historian Victor Davis Hansen commented about some months ago, and I think I brought it up on the air at the time. But he said that eventually a culture collapses because people lose faith in its institutions. And, and you have a number of other factors that there becomes no respect for the law, for instance. Um, that's happening in this country now, isn't it? We've had, a, we've had a parade of law enforcers come through the studios over the last couple of months, and they've been reflecting on that. It's even happening in small-town America. It's not something that just happens in the suburbs of St. Louis, Missouri, or in Baltimore, Maryland, or New York City. It's happening in southern Idaho. They're seeing it. So they, they're seeing that breakdown in respect for law. And we don't have, a great many people don't have faith in government any longer. They just simply feel that government has no interest in them. And other than being a revenue source, right, they can squeeze you for a few more tax dollars. I have a piece on our website. Uh, I have a, a crisis of faith. I didn't expect it at this stage of my life, but I have a crisis of faith because I believe that the people who lead my church won't stand up for the people who are faithful. I'm more concerned about how the message is going to appear in liberal media. So when you start seeing all of these institutions crumble, I've talked about this too on the air before. There is, a, there is some land down in New Mexico where you had an indigenous tribe that had lived there for perhaps millennia. And I've mentioned it on the program that it just suddenly went belly up. Everything went haywire in the, in the, in the society. And archaeologists have found the bones of the children that were thrown into wells, just dumped in there, apparently sacrificed and, and thrown away, or just somebody decided, I, I can't feed them any longer. Who knows? But it was, it was a horrible sight. You may have seen that, uh, that documentary about Easter Island, which was at one time an island that was populated with trees and lush and had a very successful culture. And then someone decided to put those giant statues up. Apparently these are godlike statues or are representations of, of what they thought God was. So they chopped on all the trees so they could roll the giant Easter Island statues down and stand them up so people could see them in sailing ships as they were coming by, which is how it was eventually discovered. But the island was denuded. And after that, the society collapsed because people no longer had faith in the leadership. They no longer had faith in the institutions. They no longer had faith in faith. So we're seeing more and more of that. And then every day you read about the abuses of government. Jason Chaffetz, who says he is, a, he is a candidate to become the next Speaker of the House of Representatives, former place kicker at BYU and a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, uh, Jason Chaffetz says, well, he, he's, been, he's been, I think, one of the quietest people, but the noise coming out about his situation with the, with the Secret Service he was investigating the Secret Service because of some scandals involving Secret Service agents chasing prostitutes in Colombia and other various places the president was visiting, and other issues with people scaling fences and running across the White House lawn and getting inside. So over at the Secret Service, they decided to embarrass Jason Chaffetz, and they released records violating the law, we should point out. If, you, if you've ever applied for employment with the federal government, the federal government legally cannot share that with anyone. Well, the number two man at the Secret Service essentially said, let's get him. 
Chaffetz had applied for a job there 12 years ago before he was elected to the House of Representatives. So they leaked all of the details to the Washington Post and Politico trying to embarrass Chaffetz because he was investigating them. And then the man who was appointed interim and then eventually the, the chief of the Secret Service, he claimed he knew nothing about this. He's now saying he's had a, he's, he's had a new recollection that he, 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 had, he had said earlier that he had no knowledge this was taking place. Now he says, no, I need to amend my statement. So how can you have any trust in these people who are trying to intimidate a sitting legislator who's trying to get to the bottom of them, potentially endangering the president of the United States? And it doesn't matter if it's Barack Obama. It could be anybody in that office. You may not like Mr. Obama, but you know the job is there to protect whoever is who's holding that seat at the time. So this could have happened to any president, anyone in, that, in, in the Oval Office and traveling around the world in that role as the leader of the free world, as what we used to call the free world, because this makes you start to believe it's not very free anymore. There's a story this morning in the Wall Street Journal. There's an economist at the Brookings Institution, which is a fairly left of center organization. It's a think tank in Washington. There's an economist. He's been associated with the Brookings Institution for over 40 years. He served in the Clinton White House. He had the temerity, uh, he, had the, he had a big set of kahunas. He testified before Congress some months ago about a proposal from U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren. And he said her proposal was not going to work. She wanted to restrict what your financial planners could tell you. In other words, if there was going to be some issues with the market, they often will tell you, look, here's a map of how the market has looked over the last 60 years. And frankly, there are downturns. But if you have some patience, it will get better. She wanted to restrict them from even telling you that, which is good advice for most people, right? That's what they're, they're your advisor. They're there to tell you all of these things. And they were sharing facts. She was trying to stop them from doing that. He objected and he said it would hurt investors, especially small-time investors who need that counseling, who need someone almost to hold their hand when you have a panic situation. Guess what? Elizabeth Warren, instead of taking his advice, decided to attack him publicly and somehow managed to drum up a Twitter campaign, people demanding that he be fired from his job in a private think tank. Private think tank. Which, which is designed, by the way, to express various thoughts. Apparently, Elizabeth Warren thinks, though, a think tank is only there to express her thoughts. She is a, she is a left-leaning Democrat, if you didn't know. But now you've got that situation. So you've got Chaffetz intimidated by the Secret Service. You've got this economist intimidated by a, a socialist in the U.S. Senate. We've already heard the stories of the IRS abuses while they were chasing people from the Tea Party all over the country and, and auditing them and attacking them. I think I've mentioned it before on the program. I used to work at a radio station where Christine O'Donnell had been an employee. She was also a talk show host there. Uh, she was one of our, our, our main fill-ins and uh, did some weekend work. And Christine and I actually uh, at one time considered hosting a show together at uh, satellite radio, it just uh, we couldn't get all the ducks in a row, and it never came to fruition. But when she decided to run for U.S. Senate in 2010, she got people snooping around her tax records and releasing them to the news media. Again, it was done to try and intimidate her. They wanted her to back out of that campaign. This is what your government is currently engaging in. And if this had been Richard Nixon in the White House, he would have already been gone. But because it's Barack Hussein Obama, who the establishment media is in love with still, and refuses to really criticize, even though he has done the same to many of them, he has gone beyond the scenes and investigated media and tried to intimidate them after they have done stories. James Rosen is a good example. They were even looking at James Rosen's family. What are we going to do about it other than just sit here and continually complain on the radio or over the telephone to me? What are we going to do about it? The fact of the matter is, this government is a mightily powerful institution. And that power right now is being turned against the common man and woman. 916, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. 
and NewsRadio1310.com. We're up to 47. Going to be a beautiful week. Uh, we're looking at temperatures by uh, by Saturday of 85. I'll tell you what, uh, that'll be my birthday, and I'm thinking I, I'm not used to having temperatures in the mid-80s when I have a, an October birthday. So I, I'm looking forward to that, getting outside, maybe breathing in a little of that hot air, because I'm usually expelling it, as you as you probably know if you're a longtime listener. Hey, got a quick note here. We had a story. I was filling in for Benita Baeza today on AM Idaho, and there was a story about hunters who are going out, and there have already been several instances in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, where hunters have gone out. They've been out hunting, and they've had some issues, and some have been all alone, and they, they, they one broke a leg, and he had to crawl out of the forest. took him two or three days. A couple others died while they were out there, and no one could find them for a week or so. So the the... The argument is if you're going out hunting, take along a companion or maybe several. Because that way, if something happens, you have an emergency, someone is there to look out for you and to call for help or go look for help. Uh, just just wanted to remind you. But we are we are now approaching that time of year when people are going to be out in the forests a lot. Uh, hunting is uh, still, for a great many Americans, a way that they manage to stock up in the winter. I know a lot of people out there who criticize hunting don't realize that for a great many Americans, if you get 60, 70 pounds of venison in the freezer, that'll feed your family through the winter or at least help feed your family. So we've been telling you, if if you're looking to have someone actually process that meat, drop by High Desert Meat Processing in Twin Falls where they process one animal at a time. What you bring in, we should note, is what you're going to get back. No substitutions. Darren Van Horn, owner of High Desert Meat Processing in Twin Falls, Idaho, he has over 30 years of experience in the meat business. You can visit High Desert Meat Processing's Facebook page, and there'll be reviews there of other customers who just rave about the place. Give High Desert Meat Processing a call for all of your wild game and domestic needs. The telephone number is 734-9949. High Desert Meat does in-house smoking. Nothing gets shipped out. Specialty meats such as jerky, pepperoni, salami, summer sausage, kielbasa, breakfast sausage, brats, Polish dogs, hot dogs, and much more. USDA approved. Darren works closely with local beef growers and their programs to ensure quality meat. The telephone number is 734-9949. Coming up on 20 minutes after 9 o'clock, Chris Anderson is scheduled to join us from the Herod Center. That's at the College of Southern Idaho. Going to be talking a little bit what, about what you'll see in the coming weeks if you're looking up into the sky. Uh, we have had some uh, interesting, what I would call, moons over the last few weeks. Uh, some of you may have actually seen the big one. Was it last Monday? That was just a sight. I was when I had to run out and get a cup of coffee, and I was driving down Park Avenue, and I looked up and I saw that thing still in the sky, competing with the sunrise, and just was absolutely blown away. That's one of those moments where you look around and you say, "All right, there was some intelligent design here." Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. 20 after 9 and 48.